Hi everyone, I just wanted to make a quick video about the grey boundaries this year. I keep seeing students making comments, especially on social media, about the grey boundaries, and some of these just aren't correct. I often see the claim, for instance, that the grey boundaries will be lower this year. And often people are saying that because they've seen comments around it, but actually the facts are quite different. Often this is because of a statement from JCQ, which reads, Exams will be graded more generously this year, compared to 2019, when summer exams last took place. So some people read the comment graded more generously and assume this automatically means the grade boundaries will be lower. But that doesn't necessarily mean it will be the case. Also, being graded more generously does not mean there's going to be softer marking. Some people think that the examiners will give marks this year that they wouldn't have given in previous years. I can assure you the marks will be awarded in exactly the same way as they would have in previous years. However, there will be some adjustments to the grades. To fully understand this, let's have a look at what grades look like in 2018 and 2019. So if we put the grades along the bottom, and then we have the percentage of students achieving each grade at the side. And I've taken for an example, Ed Excel's GCSE Maths in 2018 and 2019. So in 2018, the grades looked a little bit like this. You can see not many people achieved the top grades, grade 9, 8 and 7 and so on, and also not many people achieved the lowest grades, a grade U or 1. The most common grades are actually a grade 4 and a grade 3, with almost 20% of students achieving those grades. And if we look at 2019, you can see almost exactly the same picture. And in fact, for some of the grades, it matches perfectly. There's just slight variations each year. So actually, what we know is the percentage of students achieving each grade typically looks like this for each exam year. Remember, in 2018 and 2019, there were still exams. There was no COVID disruption then. Now let's also look at how grey boundaries are actually decided. As an example, we're going to use English literature. There are two papers for this, and the maximum for both papers is 160 total marks. Now if we drew a graph of every single person with the marks they scored in the whole country that did English literature, it may look something like this. This is just a rough guess so you can see for an illustrative purpose. As you can see, not many people scored the very lowest marks, and also not many people scored the very highest marks, most people are in the middle. Now just like we had for maths in 2018 and 2019, the percentage of students achieving each grade will often be very similar. In English literature, it turns out to be like this. Now if you imagine a simplified version of how the grade boundaries are awarded, you could say the top 4% of students will be given a grade 9. So the examiners just look for the top 4%, which could be here, and say right, everyone above that is going to achieve a grade 9. And that happens to be 132 marks. Then they look down and see the next 7% of people, draw a line and say this mark will be the grade boundary for grade 8, and anyone in between here will receive a grade 8. And then they do the same for a 7, but this time that's the next 11% of people, then the next 18% of people will achieve a grade 6, and then another 18% will achieve a 5, the next 16% will achieve a 4, and then so on for a 3, a 2, a 1, and finally the lowest 2% of people will receive ungraded. Now despite the fact that the percentage of students achieving each grade is very similar year on year, sometimes the exams are not. Some years the exams are a little bit easier, some years they're a little bit harder. So imagine this red line here was a normal year. To work out the percentage of students achieving a grade 9, they would just look for the top 4% of students and say that's the mark for a grade 9. Now imagine one year an exam was really difficult. This would mean the marks would be a bit lower. So the graph would look similar, but it would be shifted off to the left like this. So you can see more people are scoring the lower marks this time, and fewer people are scoring the higher marks. But to award a grade 9, they'd still look for the top 4% of people. So they'd find those people, draw a line, and say that's the grade 9 for this year. So you can see some years the grade 9 will change, but the same proportion of students will achieve it. This means that when you have a harder paper, the grade boundaries are lower. Now what about this year? So this year we had advanced information. This in theory should make the papers comparatively easier because you knew the topics that were coming up. Now of course you had the advanced information because there was disruption to learning, but I expect the overall effect of having advanced information is that actually grade boundaries could be higher because of this. Students will generally score better on this year's papers than they may have done in the past because they knew the topics that were coming up. Especially if you did my predicted papers, in many cases, you may have scored much higher than in previous years. Now if we go back to the graphs we looked at earlier for 2018 and 2019, there's actually a very different story for 2021. When we had the teacher assess grades, 
grades were awarded much more generously. So if we have a look at grade 9s, they were actually about 5% rather than 3%. Grade 8s again were slightly higher. There were more grade 7s, more grade 6s, even more grade 5s, and then more grade 4s. But at the lower grades, there weren't as many grade 3s, there weren't as many grade 2s, and grade 1s was fairly similar to normal, and so was actually ungraded. So in 2021, the grading was much more generous. Now let's go back to that previous statement. We were told grading was going to be more generous this year. If you actually go to the government website and look at the fine information, it says, as we return to summer exams, in 2022 exam boards will set the grade boundaries based on a profile that reflects the midpoint between 2021 and pre-pandemic grading. Pre-pandemic grading could be thought of as 2019 or 2018. So if we look at the bars here, what they're actually saying is, 2018 and 2019 was a normal year, 2021 wasn't, and there were higher grades given out those years, so we're going to set grades somewhere in between these. So if you look at the grade 9s, in 2018 and 2019 it was about 3% of students, but in 2021 it was 5%, so we can probably expect there'll be roughly 4% grade 9s. And then if you look at something like grade 3s over here, in a normal year there's around 19%, but in 2021 it was about 15%, so we could probably expect this time it will be about 17% grade 3s. This is what they mean when they say grading will be more generous. But as we saw earlier, grade boundaries are also linked to the difficulty of the paper. This suggests that grade boundaries will be lower because of this. So there are actually two factors in play. We have advanced information, which is likely to increase the grade boundaries, and we also have the generous grading, which is likely to decrease the grade boundaries. I guess the magic question is, which of these weighs more? Is it the advanced information or the generous grading? In reality, nobody really knows until all of the exams have been marked. What do we think is likely to happen though? I think it's likely that grade boundaries may be similar to normal, but there'll still be more people achieving higher grades as people will score more marks this year than a normal year. What we can know for certain is that more of the top grades will be awarded this year compared to 2019, no matter what the grade boundaries are set at. And that's a reassuring thing. Please check out some of my other videos. I have some videos on specific topics for GCSE Maths and also Further Maths, and subscribe. I'm going to do some other videos you may find interesting over the summer, for example, what results day is going to be like.